guys, it's Tilly and today I am here with my August book haul video. I bought nine books this month, which is really good compared to my normal book buying habits. And in fact, I've actually read all of them. I think maybe one or two, I haven't, but I've read the majority of them. So I'm going to jump straight in and tell you guys a bit about each of these books. Firstly, we have Paladero, The Riders of Thunder Realm by Stephen Lochran. And when I first heard of this book, I thought it was a ridiculous concept. But at the same time, I have been looking at it on the shelf since it has come out. And I finally decided to buy it because I think it's gonna be a lot of the Percy Jackson series and like a fun and quick read that you're gonna read Really enjoyed. So it is about a young orphan called Joss who basically wants to be a Paladero. So Paladeros are people who herd um, dinosaurs when it's like the peacetime and then fight um, for the war when it's not. So Joss decides he really wants to be one and so him and his trusty raptor Azov go on this quest to find this egg that would make him become a Paladero while also discovering secrets about the country that they live in. And I just... <laughs> I, I can't really wait to read it. I'm very excited. So let's see how that goes. And I'm pretty sure that everybody has heard of the next book, which is Harry Potter and the Cursed Child by J.K. Rowling, John Tiffany, and Jack Thorne, which is going to be a play, or is a play, one of those. It's it's new either way and basically this is the eighth book in the story um, and it's featuring around all the kids so I've read it and I liked it also disliked parts of it like there's a lot of bad but a lot of good and I mean I just yeah I was I was very torn like I love reading scripts I just did not like the story and the plot very much but the characters are like a new cinnamon roll we also have the memory book by Lara Avery, and I pretty much bought this and started reading it almost immediately. It's one of those books that looks bright and happy and colourful, but is completely soul-destroying and sad, and it just... Oh, I was so close to tears, so close. It is about a girl called Sammy, and she has... Neiman Pick Type C, which is kind of similar to dementia, where she starts to have blank spots in her memory, and eventually she will forget almost everything and also her body functions stop working and it's rare because a girl her age has never had it before it usually affects young children not older people and so it's kind of on the line of whether she'll survive this disease or not and so she ends up writing the memory book which is for her to write down what she does in her everyday life uh, what she was doing so that when she does have a blank spot she can reread it and see where she was without having to be too worried about what happens and this book was really hard hitting and it just it's so heavy but it's also good. I don't know if you guys have seen the trailer for this up and coming movie, but I saw it two days ago. Two days ago. And I absolutely went crazy for it, which is Nerve. And it features like Emma Roberts and Dave Franco, and just, I'm so excited for it. This is going to be amazing. And so, of course, I went and bought the book, who is by Jeanne Ryan. Now, I am going to say this, okay? I believe that the movie will be better than the book, because reading this, it was good. But it wasn't anything amazing. So basically it features around a young protagonist called V. And basically she is that innocent girl who's been overshadowed at school. And basically she is just someone that lives in shadows. And so when the game Nerve begins and she decides that, hey, I'm going to impress this boy at school and I'm going to do one of these dares. So she does it. And then she became really popular because... <sighs> A bad misfortune with a white t-shirt happened and so she was given a second dare by Nerve and so she decided to complete it and met the irresistibly hot Ian who becomes her partner during Nerve. Nerve is a game that is like truth or dare but with only dares and once a month they decide to do live rounds where they will have like cameras and watches people who bring their phones to come and video the certain plays of this game and they have to do these crazy dares and they accept it and get prize money so I think she got like a pair of shoes for doing the first dare which is crazy and I would totally do it if it was a real thing but this is like a crazy adventure and honestly if you guys have watched the movie trailer do it now it seems so action-packed and slightly thriller as well so I'm so excited I have to thank books by the dozen for this next book I will leave a link to her Instagram below um, she sent me uh, uh, this 
amazing book and it's so beautiful and a bunch of other book merch as well which I'm so thankful for because it was like it was like a birthday and it isn't even my birthday um so she sent me this savage song by Victoria Schwab and it was amazing so basically this is a world that is divided in two like two separate gangs um so you have the Flynn side and then the Harker side and then you have the two protagonists which you have Kate Harker who is this vicious mean girl who isn't actually mean she's a sweetheart but you know underneath that mean demeanor she is and then you also have uh, August Flynn who is actually a monster so he is a Sinai which means that he is like a soul-eating monster so he plays some beautiful music on his violin and the person who has a bad soul he can only eat bad souls um, stops and loves his music and then he sees the red of the soul pretty much come to their skin and then he can walk up to them touch them and eat their soul and they die but it's like I said it's only bad people that he can do that to so I guess it's kind of fair. Kate and August have their lives thrown together when August is goes to her school pretending to be a human um, and just to get closer to her until there is an assassination attempt on Kate and they pretty much have to run for their lives together. But there is no romance in this book so you know it was pretty amazing. Next up we have The Atliers which I have also read but I will talk about that in my wrap-up video. Um, so basically this is kind of supposed to be a mystery thriller about a girl called Wiley. Now she has been in in a tragic accident where her mother unfortunately passed away which you find out in like the first chapter so it's no spoilers there and then her friend Cassie has gone missing so Cassie's mum budges into the house demanding if she's seen her and when she realizes that they haven't she freaks out a bit and then um, Wiley's dad and Cassie's mum end up going to go and look for her daughter and in the meantime Cassie's boyfriend Jasper he comes to the house and he's like, okay, we need to follow this text message that she sent me without telling anyone about it. Get in the car, drive across state, and they go on this huge trip to try and find Cassie, and it's just absolutely crazy. But, yes. All is not what it seems in this book, you know, there's obviously going to be secrets and twists that will keep you on your toes. And because I am total romance and Colleen Hoover trash, I read It Ends With Us, which came out recently, and this book was so good, I loved it so much, uh, it deals with matters that need to be talked about more often and dealt with the way that she deals with it in this book. So if you guys haven't heard of Colleen Hoover, she is a wonderful new adult romance writer and she just changes my mood all the time. Like if I'm in a reading slump, I read one of her books and Bam, I'm back. So this book is about Lily who has not had an easy past and at the beginning of this book she has just come back after being at her father's funeral. She's on the rooftop and then out comes this attractive male who starts kicking chairs around because he's had a terrible day at work as a neurosurgeon and surprise surprise he becomes the love, love interest of Lily. And great things happen for quite a while in this book until they decide to add a bit of, you know, flame to this book. We've got to have a bit of controversy. And so Lily's old Old love interest Atlas comes into the book um, that is a boy that she knew when she was I think was just 17 or 16 or 17 um, and she was still at school and he was a homeless boy that lived next door and so she kind of looked after him and you find out about their past through the letters that she wrote to Ellen DeGeneres and it was just so so good and I just loved it plus it's a beautiful book we awakened by Callista Lynn which is another absolutely breathtakingly beautiful book I just absolutely love this cover and the story itself is quite amazing so one of the main plot selling points of this book is that it deals with asexuality and that is like a rare thing that is in YA books. So this book is about a girl called Victoria who's had a pretty rough going. Her father died in a car accident and her brother is in a comatose state and for her there's not much happening in her life besides her dream of going to a dance academy until one day she starts to dream about this girl called Ashlyn who sends her messages from her comatose brother and when those dreams keep getting more and more she finds out that Ashlyn too is asexual and helps her to discover more about it and when she really needs Ashlyn's help Ashlyn takes up the form of a human and comes and spends the day with her but unfortunately that can't last for too long and stuff happens and it's just a really beautiful book that gives you a lot more information and background onto asexuality and you just kind of have to like it. These next two are poetry books which I have had the pleasure of reading this month and they were both so amazing and I just absolutely adored them. So the first one we have is Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaurkar. I just know I'm getting that wrong but you guys can see it um, on there. And this is like a very heavy yet wonderful 
book of poetry. It makes you think and it makes you feel and that's kind of the best you can get when it comes to poetry. So as it says on the back here, this is the journey of surviving through poetry. This is the blood, sweat, tears of 21 years. This is my heart in your hands. This is the hurting, the loving, the breaking and the healing. And it just is amazing. And next up, a few of you guys might know who this one is, but this is The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace. I was so, so excited to hear that Amanda was writing her book of poetry, and I finally decided to buy it because I don't really buy through Amazon very often because to Australia it's like a ridiculous shipping price, but it was totally worth it. This book captured my heart, and I just... I felt so much and it was so good and it tells basically Amanda's story in four different parts. So you have the princess, the damsel, the queen and then you and it was just, it was so good. You guys have to read them, they're both amazing, especially if you guys are looking for a poetry book to start off with, like I don't read much poetry but both of these are amazing and I'm definitely going to read more. So there you guys have the books that I bought this month, um, my pile of slightly backwards books because I can't stack books apparently. So like I said, I have read the majority of those, so I will be posting my book wrap up video in a few days, maybe a week. I'm very unorganized, so we'll just see how that goes. Thank you for watching and hopefully I will see you guys again. Let me know what books you guys bought this month and maybe give me recommendations so that my pile next month can be bigger than it probably should be. Bye!